dear chair, dear audience, allow me to um, present the progress of my PhD studies, the title of which is Investigating the Efficiency of Arterial and Venous Endovascular Procedures. My name is David Lacko. I'm a medical doctor and a PhD student at the Department of Interventional Radiology, and my vision is to eliminate the consequences of peripheral artery diseases by making endovascular procedures more available and widespread. And in order to achieve this, my mission is to provide clinicians with up-to-date knowledge to help them choose the most suitable procedures. To achieve this, we have two ongoing projects at the moment. The title of my first project is Investigating the Effectiveness and Safety of Embolic Agents in Bronchial Artery Embolization. We know that severe or recurrent hemoptysis can be a life-threatening emergency with a mortality rate of around 70 to 80 percent. Now, 90 percent of uh, these uh, cases are caused by the bronchial circulation either due to inflammation or lung cancer. Possible treatments include conservative treatment, which uh, long-term effectiveness is uh, not really good, surgical uh, treatment which has a high mortality and the best treatment available nowadays is the endovascular treatment. Now endovascular treatment can be uh, done with three main types of embolic agents, particle agents including PVA and embosphere or microsphere agents, liquid agent and coils. Now coils are uh, not new, used as a primary uh, embolizing agent because it can uh, it can um, uh, disrupt the for the further interventions if uh, they are needed. Our clinical question is, are different embolic agents effective and safe in bronchial artery embolization for hemoptysis? In order to uh, answer a clinical question, we've investigated patients uh, with hemoptysis uh, treated with either uh, uh, particle agents or liquid agents. Our primary outcome was one-year hemoptysis-free survival. Secondary outcomes included technical and clinical success, perioperative and one-year mortality and complication rates. Our hypothesis is that particle and liquid embolic agents are effective and safe in the treatment of hemoptysis. Here you can see that we've conducted systematic research in the following databases with the following search key. And uh, you can see that in the end we've managed to retrieve 66 uh, articles to analyze. First, I would like to introduce you to the clinical success in the liquid group. Now, what is clinical success? We can talk about clinical success if the hemoptysis completely stops after intervention during the first 24 hours. Um, here you can see uh, the outcome in the liquid group. All of these um, studies were retrospective cohort studies, and the outcomes are, were measured in proportions ranging from zero to one. Zero meaning that none of the patients had a clinically successful procedure, and one meaning that all of the patients had a clinically successful procedure. As you can see, we have a moderate heterogeneity uh, because of the different etiologies of uh, the hemoptysis. And the pooled effect size in this group was 0 0.95, meaning that out of 100 patients, 95 patients had a clinically successful procedure. Uh, in the other part of the forest plot, you can see the same outcome in the particle group. Again, all of these were retrospective. Um, cohort studies, and the pooled uh, effect, uh, size was 0 0.95 again. Uh, we can also say that the first four studies were outliers, and the reason for this is that um, these uh, studies investigated lung cancer patients. Um, we could say that neither clinical nor statistical difference could be observed between the two um, groups of embolizing agents. Here you can see the 12 month recurrence rates as an outcome in the liquid group. And uh, again, all of these studies were retrospective observational studies. Uh, results are in proportions ranging from zero to one. Zero meaning that none of the patients experienced recurrence in the first 12 months, and one meaning that all of the patients experienced recurrence in the first 12 months. The heterogeneity uh, was high because of the um, reasons uh, uh, discussed earlier. And we could say that in the liquid group, the pooled effect size was 0 0.14, meaning that 14 patients experienced hemoptysis during the first 12 months out of 100 patients. And uh, we have an outlier as well. Again, uh, this uh, um, study investigated lung cancer patients. Here you can see the same outcome for the particle group, and um, the pooled effect size was 0 0.17. And we have outliers as well. Again, studies investigating lung cancer patients. We could say that neither clinical nor statistical difference could be observed between the two groups. After this, we've done a subgroup analysis comparing the malignant and non-malignant patients. 
here you can see the clinical success as an outcome. And um, you can see that the pool defect size in the malignant group was 0 0.74, meaning 74 patients out of 100 patients had a clinically successful procedure. And in the non-malignant group, uh, the pool defect size was 0 0.97. And um, what we found that it was a clinically and statistically significant difference. Uh, we have also investigated the 12-month recurrence rates between these two groups, and you, uh, we could see that the pool defect size was 0 0.66 in the malignant group, and the pool defect size was 0 0.11 in the non-malignant group, which is, again, a very clinically and statistically significant difference. Uh, to better visualize this, here you can see the recurrence rate between the two groups uh, at different uh, follow-up times, and uh, as you can see, that uh, there's a significant difference here as well. Uh, our strengths are that large number of studies were included, and we have a definitive answer to our research question. Limitations are that only retrospective observational studies were included, and the populations were quite heterogeneous. In conclusion, we can say that particle and liquid embolizing agents are both effective and safe in the treatment of hemoptysis. Implication for practice is that there seems to be no risk associated with using either of these agents for embolization, and our implication for research is that uh, investigators should be free to study these agents in uh, randomized controlled trials. Here you can see the, prog uh, the progress of my first project, and right now I finished writing the results and the methods parts of my manuscript. Um, the title of my second project is Comparing the Effectiveness and Safety of Surgical and Endovascular Treatment in the Treatment of Symptomatic Carotid Stenosis. We know that stroke is the second most common cardiovascular disease annually causing more than 1 million deaths in Europe alone. Now, 20% of these cases are caused by the stenosis of the internal carotid artery. Possible treatments include based medical therapy with either surgical treatment or endovascular treatment. Now, during endovascular treatment, a device called embolic protection devices can be used to prevent the further embolization during the procedure. However, uh, the usage of this uh, device is controversial and the guidelines uh, don't give any concrete recommendation whether to use it or not. So our clinical question is, is carotid stenting with an embolic filter as effective and safe as carotid endarterectomy in the treatment of symptomatic carotid stenosis? We would uh, observe patients with symptomatic carotid stenosis either treated with uh, stenting with the use of embolic filter or carotid endarterectomy. Our primary outcomes are perioperative and 30-day stroke rates. Secondary outcomes include perioperative and 30-day mortality rates and complication rates. Our hypothesis is that carotid stenting with an embolic filter is as effective and safe as carotid endarterectomy. And our clinical implication would be to reduce the perioperative stroke rates with the appropriate procedure. Uh, right now, we have uh, the inclusion and exclusion criteria. We would like to include patients that are adult patients with known hemispherical symptoms with a confirmed diagnosis either by ultrasound, CT, or MRI. Um, these patients uh, have to have known lab values for different risk factors. Uh, the known types of stents and filters documented, and the exact date of the onset of symptoms. And we would uh, include patients that um, had intervention after 180 days since the onset of symptoms, patients that had cardiac origin of embolization, and if the, uh, the follow-up is unavailable. So all in all, we have these two um, projects ongoing at the moment, and uh, I plan on submitting the first project in July, and uh, hopefully the second one in September. I would like to end my presentation with one of my favorite quotes by W.C. Fields. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, David. And congratulations for your presentation, yes. your project. I have uh, two questions. Um, regarding your first project, do you have any data that uh, in, the, in the malignant group um, the failure or the not, not the same success rate as in the non-malignant group was due to the tumor progression or, or are there any other, other reasons? Mm -hmm. um, um, I think if we are talking about the clinical success rates, we can say that um, if the patient has a lung cancer, um, more of the arteries are involved and um, it 
sometimes uh, smaller arteries are involved and it is not possible to see these arteries during the procedure and uh, possibly they are not embolized during the procedure. So uh, this could result in a worse uh, clinical, clinical success. And regarding the 12-month recurrence rates, um, um, the problem with uh, the lung cancer is that it um, continuously grows and it uh, continues to involve new and new arteries and recruit new and new arteries through angiogenesis and uh, this will mean that the recurrence rates will be higher. Thank you. Thank you. So the, the tumors are more complicated technically yes, yes. to embolize. Okay. And my second question is regarding your second project. Um, is the um, endovascular stenting without um, embolic filter? Do you have a, a data on that, or, or why, why do you specifically mm -hmm. use with embolic filter? Is it, is it uh, inferior to carotid and arterial? Um, it's, uh, right now it's completely based on the preference of the, um, of the professional. Uh, at Varosmajor they only do these procedures using the embolic filters, but um, we would like to include other clinics where uh, they don't use these filters, so we could compare. Um, this and uh, also in these large RCTs, uh, it was um, it was up to the preference of the interventionist whether to use filter or not. Okay, so there is no data. So uh, yeah, comparing really. non-embolic non filter with uh, with carotid and arterial. Yes. Okay, thank you very much. Any I would like to join to you because uh, I would also involve a third group uh, without the embolic filter because it would yes. guide us whether to use or not to use the embolic filter because it is highly expensive. And I think the boss in Weirachmoyer is not happy to hear this that they use always the embolic filters. But for the sake of the patients, mm -hmm. it is it's much yes. better to use them. Okay. Thank you for your presentation. I just want to make sure I understood correctly. There was an, one outlier in your plot uh, with a high recurrence rate, and you justified its non-malignant group. But then when you answered the previous question, you said the malignant group would have worse clinical outcome, mm -hmm. therefore maybe worse uh, uh, recurrence rate. Um, I, I think I said that the outlier was a malignant group as well. It, it was a malignant one. It was malignant. malignant. All, all of the outliers okay. were malignant. Okay, I thought non-malignant. Yes. Then my second question is, what kind of non-malignant causes? Uh, the main ones are uh, bronchiectasis, uh, cystic fibrosis, uh, COPD. Uh, I think these are the top three ones that are most common. Also, um, um, a significant amount are uh, cryptogenic, so there could be, uh, there was no uh, diagnosed cause of the hemoptysis. All right, thank you. Yeah.